Hello and welcome back to the last video about section 3.2. In this video we will determine a refined error bound for the Monte Carlo error, which will allow us to somewhat more precisely control which sample size do we need to achieve a given error. So let's see what we get. We consider the distribution of the Monte Carlo error in a bit more detail. So the quantity we are interested in is Monte Carlo error with sample size n. And by that I just mean the difference between the Monte Carlo estimate and the expectation we want to estimate. And there are two theorems from probability theory which tell us something about this error. The first one is the law of large numbers, or LLN. In short, and that's one of the standard theorems of probability. You can find that in the book in the appendix A at theorem A.8. Applied to this situation, it says limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n sum j from 1 to n f of xj equals the expectation of f of xj. So that is the result we already know. As the sample size goes to infinity, the Monte Carlo estimates that this is 1 over n times the sum converges to the expectation we want to estimate. I should have not written j on the right hand side, so I removed that. That is the standard result about independent identically distributed random variables, so that does not need anything about the xj except they are independent and they all have the same distribution. So the average on the left hand side is our estimator, that is z n mc, and if I bring the expectation of f of x to the right hand side, what I get is that the limit n to infinity of the Monte Carlo error equals limit n to infinity of that n mc minus expectation f of x, and that by the law of large numbers equals zero. So first the law of large numbers tells us the Monte Carlo error goes to zero. And we kind of knew that already from the previous section, but one of the more subtle points is the law of large numbers does not require the variance to be finite. So here we get a slightly improved result because we know the error goes to zero even if parents f of x is infinity, which is of course a somewhat obscure boundary case. But in this case, what we did in the previous subsection doesn't work anymore because the bounds were all given in terms of the variance. But even in that boundary case, the law of large numbers tells us the error still goes to zero. It may go very slowly, but it still goes to zero. Good. So that is the first result I want to cover here. The second result is what's called the central limit theorem. And that theorem you can find as theorem 8.9 in the book, still in Appendix A. That is a refined version of the previous theorem, namely that tells us a more detailed thing about the Monte Carlo error. So ENMC, that equals we know that NMC minus expectation of f of x. And we can blow that up a bit because we know from the previous slide the Monte Carlo error as is goes to zero. And the central limit theorem tells us how fast does it go to zero and turns out if we blow it up with square root of n then afterwards it goes neither to zero nor it grows to infinity. So it must go to zero like one over square root of n. And to get the scaling right we should divide that by constant sigma. I'll talk about this in a second. Then we get square root of n divided by sigma of this thing. And if we rewrite that, we get 1 over n sum j from 1 to n f of xj. And if I want to, I voluntarily can write 1 over n sum j from 1 to n also here, because the average of this constant equals the constant itself. So the blue terms 1 over n and the sum don't change anything, I still have expectation of f of xj. And now I have a square root of n in front and 1 over n in front of both terms, so I can write that as 1 over square root of n. Then I have a sum in both terms, so I can write sum j from 1 to n, and I can combine the two sums, so I have f of xj minus expectation of f of x, and the missing bit is the 1 over sigma, and I want to write that here. So that is just algebra, I rewrite the Monte Carlo error like this, and I rescale it with the square root of n for a reason you will see in a second, that will allow us to apply the central limit theorem. So these two quantities are equal. And I wrote the Monte Carlo error in this strange form, because the expression in the last line is what the central limit theorem tells us something about, and what it tells us is that if we choose sigma right, that converges in distribution to a standard normal distributed random variable. 
So the last thing I need to explain is what is sigma, and that is not so surprising. That is just whatever number standardizes the f of xj. So sigma is square root of the variance of f of xj, and they are all the same, so I can just as well write square root of the variance of f of x. So that is sigma, and that is the sigma I need for the central limit theorem to apply. So the central limit theorem, that is often abbreviated CLT, gives us this convergence. Convergence in distribution means the thing which converges is random, and the distribution of this random quantity gets closer and closer to what's written on the right hand side. So in this case, closer and closer to being a standard normal distribution as n increases. Good. And that tells us quite a little more than the previous result. So again, from the previous result, we only knew the arrow goes to zero. Now we know it goes to zero like one over square root of n, which we kind of knew before. But if we blow it up with square root of n, I do that on the left hand side, square root of n Monte Carlo error, then we know exactly what happened. Namely, if we divide by sigma, it goes closer and closer to a standard normal distribution. Let me summarize this for large n, the Monte Carlo error, if I multiply with square root of n and divide by sigma, is approximately standard normal distributed. And if I multiply everything through with sigma divided by square root of n to cancel this factor here, then we get the Monte Carlo error itself. It's approximately normal distributed, where the new mean will be zero times this number, so still zero. And the new variance, we know if I multiply something with the number, the variance gets multiplied with this number squared. We used this just in the last video. So the new variance will be sigma squared divided by n, or not sure how I should write it. I could write sigma over square root of n, and that thing squared. Good. So that's what we got from the central limit theorem. So that is approximately for a large n. Now, how can we use this? First, that tells us the thing we already knew, namely the error decreases like 1 over square root of n. That we already knew. But the new information is that after we blow it up with square root of n, that behaves like a normal distribution, so we know a lot more. And you know the normal distribution. The normal distribution has a density which looks like that a bit. and that thing here is meant to be the density of n0 sigma squared over n. So that tells us the most common values are close to zero, and large values, either large negative or large positive, are rare to occur. And these lines are meant to be approximately standard deviations. So we can put some markers here. I would say that should be about one standard deviation. So that should be sigma over square root of n. Around here is 2 sigma over square root of n, here is minus sigma over square root of n, and here is minus 2 sigma over square root of n. So we see being more than two standard deviations out is a rather unlikely thing to happen. And there is this result, which you maybe know from when you learned about confidence intervals, that if you go nearly sta two standard deviations out, so if you do 1.96 standard deviations, then the probability of being inside these bounds is 95%. We are out in the tails with 5% probability half of which is to the right and half of which is to the left. And using that knowledge, we can know quite a lot about the error. So from that, we can, for example, conclude the probability that the Monte Carlo error is bigger than 1.96 sigma over square root of n is 5%, approximately for large n, because that approximation only holds for large n. But we will have large n, so that is fine. Or one can, going a bit further with this argument, conclude the probability that the exact value is in an interval centered around the estimate with this with 1.96 sigma over square root of n. That is 95%. That would be a confidence interval where we have the truth we are interested in here. And on the right hand side, an interval we can actually see that an MC is something we compute our compute with our computer program. So we know how large an interval we need to build around our estimator to contain the true value with high probability. So that is all variance over the idea the error decreases like 1 over square root of n. But the central limit theorem gives us this number 1.96 and gives us these slightly more precise estimates.
So, what I've shown you here is the main idea of section 3.2.4 and I will leave the details for you to read in the section itself. So what you should do now is you should first look at the argument I presented in this video until you have digested this. And then using this understanding, you should be able to make sense of section 3.2.4. So you should now go and read that. Thank you all. And that concludes our discussion of section 3.2. And we should now have means to for given n when we compute the Monte Carlo estimate to say what is the error of our estimate. So we get not only number, but we get an error with it. And if we turn these things around, we should be able to say for a given problem, how large n should we choose to get the error down to a prescribed value. Good. This is the end of our discussion of section 3.2. So what you should do now is you should go back to the book and read through the pages more carefully and try to match it up with what we have just discussed and make sure you understand all the details in these pages. Thank you all.